Hi there, this is Ranjit from tech2bus.com and welcome to the 8th Q&A session and we have got quite a few questions. Uh, it's a variety of questions I would say. So let's get on with the same. And the first question is from easy to cool and he asks us, I currently own a HTC Incredible S, that's an Android phone. Please suggest me two or three Android phones with the better camera performance than the Incredible S. Planning to buy a new phone, thank you. Uh, currently you can definitely look at the Sony Xperia S, it's got a 12 megapixel shooter and it shoots pretty nice photographs. The next uh, phone that I suggest is the HTC One X and the good thing about HTC One X is that the shutter speed on the same is very fast. So these are the two phones that I will currently suggest. The next question is from Anil Sethi04 and he asks us, Hi Ranjit, I'm following your videos from the past 8 months and I love your videos, thank you. And I'm living away from main colonies, as a result I miss all the wired ISPs, so the only option with me is to use data cards. I'm using BSL 3G but I have one PC, one laptop and two Android phones. I want to connect all these devices to BSL data card for data sharing. So any router is present that supports data card and data sharing via Wi-Fi to other devices, thank you. Yes, Anil, you can definitely go with a Wi-Fi router that supports 3G data cards. And you can look at this Osus RTN30 new that I had reviewed about a year ago. It's a very good Wi-Fi router and it can also support 3G data cards. But the only thing I want to make clear is that whenever you're buying a device like this, just make sure the data card that you have is compatible with that router. So before purchasing any 3G enabled Wi-Fi router, just make sure the data card model that you have is supported by the same. The next question is from Ankar and he asks us, what is AHCI mode? Is it necessary to change to this mode for efficient, optimum and error-free use with SSD? Or can I just swap my hard drive with the SSD and install Windows on it? And he asks us one more question. That's the second question. I'll, answer, uh, I'll talk about it later. First, let us talk about AHCI mode. AHCI mode stands for Advanced Host Controller Interface and uh, the advantages of AHCI is that it uh, enables NCQ that's native command queuing and hot swappable functionality and for the optimum performance of a SSD uh, AHCI mode is recommended uh, because of the NCQ mode but you can definitely run SSD in the standard IDE mode but it is not suggested because to get the best performance from your SSD AHCI mode is recommended and the next part of the question is he says I use a VAR laptop but the BIOS is very limited and it does not have any option to change to AHCI mode. Is it possible uh, from inside windows or by some kind of hack to enable the same? My warranty is already expired so I can take the risk. No, uh, the thing is that AHCI mode is a hardware thing so you cannot enable it via software. And the next question we have is from Sumit. Uh, and he asks us, hi Ranjit, uh, will you suggest me how to connect three HDMI devices with my LCD television which has got only one HDMI input port? I had googled a lot and found HDMI splitter but I doubt it will work. Uh, kindly tell me how much will it cost uh, and can you suggest, suggest me any other device? Yes, you can definitely use a HDMI splitter. I don't know if they are readily available in India in retail stores but I checked eBay India and you can readily find HDMI splitters. Uh, which have three HDMI input and one output so you can use something like that and I found them to be pretty cheap uh, I have seen it to go around 1200 or 1400 bucks and these definitely work and the next question is from Vishnu202 and he asks hi Ranjit will you please suggest me an Android phone between rupees 15,000 to 20,000 that's approximately about 300 to 400 dollars with a pretty good camera and decent specification. For this range, I would definitely suggest you the Sony uh, Neo V or the HTC One V. I have done a detailed review of HTC One V, so you can check out that. Both are great phones and they have very good camera performance. And the next question is from Sarvesh Muthari and he asks us, Hi Ranjit, what is YouTube Partner Program and how to become a YouTube Partner? Uh, YouTube Partner Program is nothing but uh, uh, a select YouTube users get can enroll in this and by doing this you can submit your videos for advertising revenue so you can earn a little bit by advertising and also these partners can customize their YouTube channel a little bit more than uh, other users also you can uh, do a little bit of more branding and how to become a partner is that I don't know the exact uh, specifications or the what do you say criteria to become a partner but 
uh, I would say if you are regularly producing YouTube videos and a lot of users are already interacting with the videos that you make, you, sh you can apply for the YouTube Partner Program. Currently, uh, this program is available in around 20 countries and yes, it's available in India also. And the next question is from Jarvi Fai Albert and he asks us, when will the hard drive pricing come down to normal? In the second quarter of 2010, I brought a 500 GB hard drive for Rs. 1900. Now it's about 4500 rupees. Yes, uh, the hard drive pricing uh, has shot up earlier due to the flooding uh, in Thailand, etc. And due to that, the uh, pricing has increased. But I do not think the uh, pricing of the hard drive will go back to what you have seen in 2010 or earlier uh, but uh, if you can wait uh, for about two or three months by june or july the pricing should come down approximately by 25 percent but if you are expecting the price to come down to pre-2010 levels it's not going to happen anytime soon and the next question is when will any 4g phones launch in india and another question is which is the best cheap processor for gaming within rupees uh, 8000 this is from ABDL26 uh, and the thing is that I don't know when the 4G phones will launch in India. Uh, 4G was just launched by Intel in India but that's just for data cards as of now. And regarding your second question, the best processor for gaming within Rs 8000, you did not specify this is just for the CPU or for the GPU. If it is both for the CPU and the GPU, then uh, you should go with the AMD Fusion series because those processors have both the GPU and the CPU built-in. But if it's just for the CPU, I would suggest that you go with the Intel Core i3 processor. And the next question is from Abita Start, and he asks us, Hi Ranjit sir, love your videos anyways. And I wanna know that if ICS, that is the ice cream sandwich, Android update, that's Android 4, consumes more battery power. And it's a very tricky question, Abhi. Uh, I cannot uh, surely say that, does ICS consume more power than gingerbread because the current Android phone that I'm using, that's the Galaxy Note, is currently still on ICS. And to come to a sure shot conclusion, if ICS is consuming more power, I need to use a phone normally for about 15 or 20 days. So I cannot definitely tell right now, does ICS consume more power? But I doubt it should be like that. And the next question is from Jayroj. And he asks us, is it worth uh, to buy Micromax Funbook than any other mobile just for browsing and installing web apps? The thing is that Jay, I did not uh, test or buy this Micromax Funbook as of now, so I don't know the performance of it. I've seen some videos regarding this uh, Micromax Funbook and to be very frank, the browser on it is a little bit choppy. It's not as smooth as some of the dual core Android phones that you have seen. So yeah, I'd say it is okay for just casual browsing and installing apps, but does it perform better than a good Android phone? No. The next question comes from Saturn A and this is a very tricky question. Uh, Xbox versus PS3, best gaming experience and your opinion. Saturn, this is a very uh, tricky question to answer. It is like a uh, question like is AMD better or Intel better, something like that. And we have fans for both. So uh, it is a very difficult question to answer. But personally, I have both. I have the Xbox 360 as well as the PS3. And I'm going to tell you some of the differences between both of them. The good thing about PS3 is that, technically speaking, it is a little bit more powerful than Xbox. And some of the exclusive games that I've seen on PS3, uh, graphical wise, they are much more better than Xbox exclusives. Some of the games are like Killzone, it has gorgeous graphics and Drake series. The graphics are very good. Another good thing about PS3 is that the online gaming on that is completely free. Whereas on an Xbox Live, to play uh, multiplayer games, you need to purchase the gold account and that's not free. But again, uh, some of the uh, things like uh, cross chat functionality, etc. are present on the Xbox 360, which are seriously lacking on the PS3. So I would say that if you're just a casual gamer and do not do a lot of multiplayer gaming, etc. I think so, PS3 would be a better choice. Also as a media streaming device and a, uh, what do you say, media player, PS3 is a little bit better because it has the Blu-ray player, whereas the Xbox 360 just has a DVD player. Again, both consoles are very good. Currently, if you're buying any of them, you can't go wrong because most of the popular uh, games, what you get will come out on both the platforms. And I would say that if you would like to choose between one of them, 
uh, just look at what your friends are using if you have majority of your friends that are using the xbox 360 go with the xbox 360 but if your majority of friends are currently on the ps3 go for a ps3 the next question comes from sandeep suresh and he asks, a what exactly the main difference between a san and a nas actually the difference between a nas and a san is very they are very similar but again uh, the sans are generally used in very large enterprises and where you need a lot of data for example petabytes and petabytes of data and generally nas are used for let's say if you have a small office to a medium office let's say 10 to 500 users a nas will be more than enough uh, modern day NASs can also hold quite a bit of data. I've seen NASs to hold around 100 terabytes of data. But uh, again, if you need petabytes and petabytes of data, you have SAN. And the major difference between a NAS and a SAN is that on a NAS, you will have an Ethernet uh, at the back that can be a gigabit or whatever. But generally on a SAN, there are fiber channels. And what happens with the SAN is you have an array of servers aligned and they are connected to one centralized machine generally on a nas user accounts etc all, all are handled by the nas itself but that's not the case with the san san is just let's say an array of servers what you have and you get a centralized storage and generally this is used in enterprises not with the small or medium offices and the next question is, comes from uh, v rajesh and he asks hello ranjit can you tell me which phone galaxy nexus or galaxy note can run high graphic games like gta smoothly and what is the price of nexus in Ahmedabad and galaxy nexus or note whose display is better uh, and which color do you like the note black or white very interesting question uh, and again uh, i would say that the galaxy nexus officially hasn't been launched in india and i don't think so it's going to launch because if samsung would uh, have launched it they would have launched it long back but um, regarding the resolution, yes, the Galaxy Note has a slightly larger resolution and the Gal uh, and on the other hand, what do you say, this Nexus has the true 720p uh, resolution. Again, I would say the Galaxy Note screen is a little bit brighter if you compare it to Nexus. But again, uh, the ne I found the Nexus to be very comfortable. I have done a hands-on with the Nexus. You can check out that video. Also, I have done a detailed review about the Galaxy Note, so you can check out even that. Again, uh, which color do you like personally? I personally am owning a black uh, uh, note and I like the black. I have seen also the white one, but frankly speaking, I didn't like the white color note. So I hope that answers your question. So these were the questions for the eighth Q&A session. If you would like that answer, uh, some of your tech related questions, uh, please post them in the comment section below and start it with the Q&A tab. I'll select those questions and answer them in the next Q&A session. And I just want to say that I might be postponing this Q&A sessions from Friday to Saturday. So I hope you found this Q&A session helpful. That's it for now. This is Ranjit from tech2bus.com and I hope to see you in my next video.